Welcome back to my channel. Um, and today's video, I'm taking it in the kitchen. I just got home from work not too long ago. I know one of the things that we have been really trying to work on is getting rid of a lot of the um, foods that we have that we have uh, frozen or in the pantry. Um, some of the stuff is probably even expired. But anyways, we've been trying to minimize and make good use of what we currently have and try to minimize on our grocery costs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through some of the things and I am just going to see what we have and let's see what we can put together tonight. So I'm gonna start in the freezer and you're gonna to have to excuse the mess. I'm kind of a little embarrassed by some of this stuff, but um, I know. So we have a lot of miscellaneous stuff in here. These appear to be meatballs. Something we need to work on better is labeling what we have. Um, I think these may have been the deer um, ground meat that we got. Todd does hunt, but this would have been deer from last year. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably maybe pull this. I'm going to set this out. Hmm, I don't know if this is going to be any good. We'll try this. I think these are maybe onion tops. We'll see if these are any good. And if any of these are not very good, I am just going to end up pitching them, which is fine because I need to go through this stuff. So these look like they are maybe some cookies that I made up and threw in the freezer. I thought we ate them all, but if that's what that is, that's going to be dessert. Let's see, we got meatballs. What would go well with meatballs? Oh my goodness, I think this is the brisket that Todd made. That'll be for another night, but that sounds really good. We have steamed, ooh, I know what I wanna do with this. This is gonna be another meal. I think I might make a soup with that. See. Some shrimp shells. Todd likes to save those whenever he makes his gumbo. Our mommy is fantastic. I love snacking on those. What do we have here? Blast veggie cilantro lime. What's this one? Ooh. This one's a cauliflower risotto medley. That might be good with this. Ooh. Wonton wrappers. String fries, so that could be good with a different meal this week. Whole okra, I think Todd uses this for maybe his gumbo also. I think he uses that as part of a thickening agent. Ooh, Cajun pork. Is this? Oh my goodness. It's been a while since I've been in the freezer. These are butter braids. I love these. We're going to have these maybe this weekend. So I'll put that up there. Some ham. What is this? Oh my goodness. I think that may have been some pesto. That'll be for a different night. Let's see. Okay, so I think corn. Okay, I'm gonna see what I have in the pantry here, or my cabinets, I should say. Hmm. I think, I think I might do something with this. Okay, I have an idea for another 
recipe another day for that. Okay, so I think I might do something with the cream of mushroom soup. Let's see what is in the fridge. Ooh, olives. Whoops. I don't even know what this is. I think that might be elderberry jam. Okay, and we have various condiments in here too. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of look through here and see what we have. And then I'm going to make a decision of what I'm going to kind of throw together. Lemon juice back there, orange juice. different srirachas so, so we cook a lot we make a variety of things but we don't use the entire container so we have a lot of miscellaneous partially opened bottles hmm okay so I am going to see what I can come up with and I will give myself about 10 minutes to kind of figure something out uh-oh, and whip together. I have some various cheeses in here. Oh, okay. I have a partial onion. I might use that. Some cheese. My basil, the last that I harvested. Oh, I have some beans in here. I'll probably do something with that this week. Okay, let me see what I can figure out and I will let you know what I whip together. Okay, so I think I decided on what I'm going to make. I'm going to make a, use this riced veggie, cauliflower risotto medley. And I'm going to make that with the meatballs. I actually found some beef stock that's, I don't know, it's probably about um, two thirds of the way full. So I'll use that up, that was in the fridge. Let me make sure the date is okay. Ooh, November. 15th, we're getting close, have an onion. I did decide to put the cream of mushroom soup away. I am going to actually make a different type of soup using this. And I call it a mousse soup. So we got a little bit of whipping cream left. I have some butter in there. And like I said, the cookies, this will be an easy one. I'll just pop them on the cookie sheet and we will have this. I might add, oh, I'm gonna probably use some of my homegrown garlic. So I'm probably going to go ahead. I know I'll be putting garlic in it as well. All right, so let me get some of this chopped up and put together and I will show you what I do with it. Okay, so what I'm gonna start out with is I'm going to just, I'm just gonna open up this bag. Of, it's just a California style vegetable mix. Nothing fancy. I'm gonna pop that in there and see if there was an expiration. Oh, August 16th, 2023. Hopefully it's still good. We will find out. It's been in the freezer all this time. So we shall find out. Garbage roll. So I'm just gonna add just a tick of water. I have this in my handy dandy little steamer here. This happens to be a Pampered Chef steamer. I'm just going to Pop this in the microwave for several minutes and get in steamed. I think we're going to start with about three minutes. So while that's cooking in the microwave, I'm going to go ahead and get started chopping. Okay. So I have my onion that was in the fridge. Get that chopped and on the plate. And then I'm going to get a Few cloves of garlic going here and I'll just get this chopped. I don't know if you saw my video of me planting garlic, my harvest this year. I planted garlic um, probably about a month ago so I showed you how I prepared the uh, garlic cloves to get those planted and I was thinking about maybe I didn't plant enough this year. I planted, it was a little over a hundred cloves, which should 
hopefully produce that many bulbs of garlic. But if you're into gardening at all and interested in gardening, you know, I can go ahead and pop those videos down below. When I cook, I do a lot of my cooking with no recipe. So actually me videoing some of these recipes, um, I'll let you know at the end if they turn out or not. And I never ever made a recipe the same because I would forget what I put in it. But doing the um, these videos, it would be nice to, for me to be able to go back and look to see what I did, how I did it. So I probably took about three or four cloves of garlic and I'm just chopping those up really good. So I don't know about, these were some green um, onions, the, like the body of the onions. I was trying to just save them to see what I could do with them. What I might use these for, I'm just cutting them up just to see how they're going to work. Let me actually taste it because I may not even use it in this recipe. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to use it in this recipe. It doesn't, it doesn't taste right. I might end up just throwing that or composting that all together. So, um, but let me get my onion and garlic over to the stove and get the pan going. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this going and get that heated up a little bit. I'll throw some oil in there. I just got into starting to use cast iron pans. Todd's been cooking with them for a while and I was absolutely amazed as to how wonderful they actually are. I had one years ago and I didn't know how to take care of it. So I ended up washing it and I didn't do all the, the proper prep and clean. You're not supposed to use soap or <laughs> soap and water on it. Um, you're supposed to season it first and then when you're done with it you just wipe it out and maybe rinse it with water but you wipe it out and then you season it with oil again and you keep doing that over and over and it becomes this beautiful um, non-stick pan that cooks perfectly heats perfectly through all the way through and um, yeah so I'm learning how to use cast iron now and I'm kind of loving it so I'm gonna go ahead and while that's heating, I'm gonna see if the steamed vegetables need cooking anymore. I'm gonna get that in there probably for three more minutes. Get it nice and hot, because I'll show you how I make my, I call it a mousse soup, because it almost turns into this mousse as I'm cooking, or as I'm, um, making it and I'll show you how I do that. We're going to start with the onions. Just get that in there. So I think I'm going to use, this is my SPG, salt, pepper, garlic, equal parts. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that on. This was just salt and pepper, but I love garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. down until it kind of cools a little bit. Years ago I used to have a gas stove which I love because you can temperature control your pans a lot better. Um, but this is what I have to work with and it's fine. It works fine. We cook a lot of really good meals off of this. All right, so I'm gonna throw the garlic in. Just a little bit more olive oil here. The smells are coming together nicely. Oh, you know what else? I have some wine in there. I think I'm gonna, because I need to use up some wine. I'm gonna throw some wine in this. I'll be right back. So I'm just grabbing this. This happens to be a semi-dry red table wine. Just um, something we had laying around. I'm gonna use a little bit of that. Mm, get 
get that going. I think the red will taste better with the deer meat. I had some white in there too, but. Okay, let's see what we got here. So this spoon, this was my grandma's spoon. Um, my grandfather came over from Sicily back in the early 1900s and they were, I think they were, I know they were at least 10 years, maybe 10 to 14 years age difference. Um, but this is a spoon that she used. So this spoon has got to be well over a hundred years old and it actually looks like it was a carved spoon from wood. Um, but I love this spoon. So I cook with it whenever I can. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that rice in there, let it cook down. And I'm just gonna add some of this beef stock. Might have some left over for another meal. Okay, so we're gonna just let that kind of simmer. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I, I'm just throwing stuff together that we have in the house. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna just let that set on the side there. I'm gonna get the oven preheated for the cookies. Um, that is riced cauliflower. It's the risotto medley. And um, there's some wine in there and some garlic and onions. Okay, and I'm going to be using the leftover. I'm assuming this is those deer meatballs. Probably. All right, bye. Bye. Have fun. My daughter's in the theater club at her school. And this is two weeks before their play. And um, she does like the crew backstage stuff so they're in process of practicing getting their play scenes and sets all together so she's going to be doing that over the next couple weeks okay so i'm preheating the oven i'm going to pop the cookies in when that's ready to go this is boiling i can turn that down a little bit I'm trying to get this rice broken down I feel like this might be too much liquid in here. Actually, while that's waiting, I'm going to throw a little SPG in here as well. I'll just let that sit and soak with the SPG. Added some SPG in the steamed veggies. Okay, so while that's going, I'm just gonna throw, oh yeah, these were those meatballs that Todd made out of the ground deer meat that we had. Tell you what, you can make, oh my gosh, anything you make ground meat beef with, you can make with the ground deer meat. It is amazing, amazing. So we're hoping he gets at least two, maybe three deer this year. It has fed us all year long. We'll let that continue to simmer and cook. Everything was taken out of the freezer, so the meatballs are, they're cooked. The meatballs are cooked, but they are frozen. So we gotta at least get them cooked enough where they are all heated through. So part of me doing all of this, it's almost like a, a cleansing. I'm trying to minimize and get rid of a lot of the things, like I said, that have been sitting around in the freezer and in the pantry and I am wanting to start do, doing things more from scratch. Um, I do have some things in there from scratch, but I want most of the food that I have in there from scratch and ready to go. But I gotta clear out the freezer, you know, out with the old and with the new. And as I work on my garden and grow different things, um, I'm definitely gonna be preserving a lot more. We did, for the first time this year, did a lot of canning. Um, Todd did, actually. He follows instructions way better than I do. So I let him go ahead and take the reins on canning this year. And I kind of told him, made a deal with him, 
How about I grow the stuff and you can can and cook the stuff? Although I like to cook too, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna let that simmer for a while. I'll be right back. Okay, so while this is still simmering and thawing out with the meatballs, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this, these steamed vegetables. I threw a little bit of SPG on top of that too. I'm just gonna put this in the blender. I am going to make something that hopefully tastes amazing. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of butter. Everything tastes better with butter, right? I'm gonna guess maybe a couple of tablespoons and I'm gonna add some of this heavy whipping cream. Oh, let's turn it on. Wee! Okay, that actually that smells pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I wish I had some more heavy whipping cream now. So here is the thickness. It's it's pretty thick. Mm. That is pretty good. I actually am gonna add a little bit of heavy whipping cream in here too. Yeah, it would have been nice if I had more heavy whipping cream because that is just delicious. Okay, and then I'm gonna throw the butter in this as well and get those flavors all melded together. And the heavy whipping cream and the butter just gives it a richness that, mm, super good. But I don't know what this tastes like yet, so we'll see. We shall see. So I am just going to serve this in here. You can see how thick and rich that is. That's why I call it a mousse soup. Maybe the flavors are delicious and it was super, super simple. Started with something super, super healthy and turned into something super, super delicious. We're still gonna call this healthy because of all those vegetables that are in there. And um, if you don't mind the added fat, this is a great way to get your kids to eat their vegetables or anybody who doesn't really like vegetables. However, if you are on dietary restrictions, I get it, um, you could probably, um, try to mix in, you know, things that are not as fattening. Maybe use, I don't know, skim milk would work with this. I haven't tried it, but maybe that's something I can try. We'll see what the difference is. Ooh, I know what I'm gonna add to that soup. I will be right back. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna cut me some thyme. I love thyme and I'll be, I'll be right back. I bet you that will add great flavor to all of this. Let me taste this real quick. Not too bad, not too bad. I just add a little bit more seasoning and I'll be back. I'm gonna go grab some thyme outside. This is why I love growing things because I think of a flavor as I'm cooking. I just go outside and cut me some. All right, so I'm just going to peel some of this thyme right off of here. Oh my God, this smells amazing, smells amazing. And what I love about thyme, so if you garden at all, or even in your landscaping, like I right now I have this thyme in my landscaping. Um, if you're looking for a ground cover that smells amazing and dual purpose, not only will it look nice, but you can cook with it. So it serves a, a dual purpose. Thyme is an amazing herb to do that with. Um, other herbs that I have in my landscaping, um, oregano and Rosemary, I need to plant some more rosemary though because I love the way that smells. And I do have lavender too. Um, I was actually gonna be harvesting some of the lavender seeds and, and uh, getting those germinated so I can plant some more lavender plants next year. And I'm sure that'll probably be a future video as well. Lavender is easy to collect the seeds and I wouldn't necessarily say it's easy to germinate because it, it takes a long time to germinate lavender seeds. You have to be patient. And I usually have, honestly, maybe a 30% um, germination rate. 
and maybe it's just how I'm doing it or maybe I'm not using the proper soil. I'll have to research that more. But once you get it germinated and it starts growing, it does amazingly well in the landscaping. And I don't have the best soil and it's in a sunny spot and we don't, you know, we, we'll get rain, but then we get drought. So it's like feast or famine when it comes to the weather. But anyways, it does fantastic out there. Um, this year, unfortunately, I let my zinnias grow up too high so they didn't get grow to their full potential. But that's gonna change next year. I'm gonna make sure I keep my zinnias only in, I'm gonna call it my zinnia garden, which is kind of uh, next to on the outskirts of my vegetable garden that's out there. Okay, so I have some time. I am just gonna sprinkle this in, and this is gonna taste amazing in that mousse soup that I made as well. So I'm gonna get that going. I'm probably gonna to have to reheat that soup only because it cooled off pretty quickly. Okay, let's see if this made a difference. I'm sure my meatballs are completely thawed at this point, so that should not be a problem at all. Let me give that a, a taste. Not too bad, not too bad. Let me see here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. And, oh, I think I know what else I'm gonna add to this. I have some Asiago cheese in there. We usually do keep a pretty good variety of cheese in the refrigerator, because again, we're kind of foodies and we love to cook. So I'm gonna shred some of this up and I'm gonna throw that in there. Throw this in here. Keep a little bit for the topping. If I had mushrooms, I would be adding that in here. I don't remember if I already said that or not, but I think that would be a good, a good flavor as well. So the cheese kind of helped thicken it up a little. <laughs> that is pretty good. I feel like something's missing, but that's actually really good. And it's kind of getting late. It's already after six. I've probably been cooking for at least a half hour now, and I think Todd's getting really hungry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to plate this. I'm gonna heat that mousse soup up just a little bit. Oh, and I know something else we have. We had some leftover bread. I'm gonna go ahead and slice that and serve it with that as well. I'm gonna get the cookies in the oven so we can have that for dessert. Let me get all this plated up and ready and I'll show you what we got. Okay, so here is the finished product. This was the riced cauliflower, so that's somewhat healthy. You obviously can use anything else um, that you would like. If you wanted to use actual rice or a pasta, you could do that as well. And then it was the meatballs that were in the freezer, mm -hmm. a couple slices of bread, and the mousse soup. So I'm going to get Todd out here and see what he thinks about this. Okay, so Todd's gonna go ahead and sample this. Mm, that's good. Do you like that? Yeah, it's good. It's good. And then, of course, the meatballs are good. We know the bread's good. And go ahead and try that. That's what I call the mousse soup. I hope it's warmed enough. Yep, that's good. Is that really good? Mm hmm All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and taste it. I didn't really do a final taste. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, that is really good. And didn't get a chance to even try the meatballs earlier. Mm hmm. I already knew the meatballs were good, though. Mm. The time made it for sure. That is perfect with the time in there. You should have tasted it right before I added the thyme. But yeah, the thyme, that was the perfect, that was a good call. Okay, so that is my makeshift meal. Quick and easy, just grab what was in the freezer and in the pantry and didn't have to buy anything at the store. I think I would make this again. Would you like it if I made this again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I took really small bites when I was taste testing it, but I have to tell you, this actually is super amazing. Once you get everything in one bite, it is really, really super amazing. I, uh, I call this one a success. 
both this and the mousse soup. I probably, if I had more heavy whipping cream, I would have added that and I probably could have added a little bit more butter, but it was very good anyways. So the cookies are out of the oven. I made at least seven cookies and we're down to five. So based on that, I can already tell you there are people who really like these cookies. Mm, oh, those are, those are very good. So these cookies that I made, this was just a random batch. I didn't really follow a recipe. Um, I kind of sort of followed a recipe, but I threw in everything I had in my baking drawer that were partial bags like coconut and um, I think there were maybe caramel pieces and chocolate chips and maybe even white chocolate chips, but there was random stuff. But anyways, this makes for a great finish to the meal that actually turned out. I call it a success. But let me know what you think of this video and um, let me know if you've challenged yourself and what are some good combinations that you've made with some of the foods that you've prepared. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. I appreciate you and thank you for watching. Until next time.